Hello everyone, my name is Webweaver, and this is my second time recording this because the first time encoding overloaded. Very funny moment. Uh, but today I bought something, and it was the most, like, you get what you pay for thing, probably, of my life. Um, I have a lot of, uh, computer mice, computer mouse, computer mouse eye, computer mice, and, uh, I like them. I like them a lot. But 90% uh, of them are packed away in boxes that will never be opened for the next, like, eight months. So I needed, a, I needed a mouse for my laptop because I'm trying to do uh, truly mad dog things. Uh, truly crazy brain worms things. Uh, like, need it, like wanting a, uh, a, a computer mouse for your laptop, if you can believe it. Um, so I got this, like, cheap, like, literally, like, the cheapest mouse that I could find. It was, like... 10 bucks. And I shouldn't say cheapest mouse, because there were definitely cheaper ones, but this one's really funny. Like, if you hold it to the side, like, the mouse wheel slides around in its area, right? Like, the mouse wheel is normally in the middle, but you could, like, push the mouse wheel to the right or push the mouse wheel to the left, and it will push up against the plastic. Very funny. Uh, also, uh, the this is advertised as a good thing, but the clicks are basically inaudible. Like, the clicks, they just don't exist. It's probably, like, one of the the cheapest feeling mouses I've ever felt in my life. And it is really funny that gravity affects the mouse wheel. Um, because I cannot say the same for pretty much any of the other mice that I have. But, you know, for something that was just an uh, emergency band-aid, I honestly can't really complain about it at all. I just think it's fun to see, like the differences in something cheap and the differences in something nice, because my daily driver is the the Razer Trinity, is that what it is? The, um, Razer... Oh, it's the, it's the Razer Naga Trinity. That's the one that, that's my daily driver, which I actually feel really lucky, because I have a lot of friends who have Razer mice, and they just have, like, constant technical issues with it. And the worst thing that's ever happened to me is sometimes the MMO, like, sidebar thing, I have to take it on and off. Because, like, the Trinity is, like, you have three side buttons. One of them is just for, like, uh, first-person shooters where you have, like, a couple extra buttons. One of them is the horrible circular MOBA thing that's terrible. And then the third one is just a numpad. And that's the one that I leave on there, like, 99.99.99% of the time. I've, I've taken it off, like, once to try like the FPS version for like five minutes before I switched back. Uh, I love, I love, love me, uh, love me MMO mouse. I uh, would not be able to play Final Fantasy without it. But uh, anyways, what are, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Well, it's quite obvious. We're gonna pick random character and then we're going to pick uh, Seventh Curse because I like having money. And then uh, Old God, I'm feeling yeah, I'm thinking Goizo. I I'm thinking Goizo Kino. Character exclusive perks. Hey, do I get a mulligan or something? We played this guy last round. Ah, it's probably fine. But, um... Yeah, no, I just, like... I I'm perfectly fine with this cheap mouse, assuming that it works uh, at least for, like, a couple of months. But, uh, it just is... It's really funny to me that, like, immediately I can just see the scroll wheel moving in its area, and it can... Like, it's being affected by gravity. That's the funniest thing about it, I think. That, that's the detail that I like the most, anyways. But, uh, we've got uh, charisma, knowledge, strength, second mystery, and dexterity. We've actually got the whole shebang. The gang's all here. So I think what we're gonna do is, I mean, let's be honest here. There's there's a few ways that we can go. And we just are gonna kind of fall into one of them, I think. I wonder if the, uh, the army knife has been buffed. You want to try to do the army knife? See if that's been, uh, like, the, the changes are actually implemented. It would be kind of bad for, like... Well, if we're using a knife, we're going to be a samurai, but, uh... I was about to just say, hire a samurai, with, like, no context, and then I was thinking to myself, how do I actually tie that in with what I was saying, and then I just blanked, and then I just said, hire a samurai anyways, with the context being explained right now. Um... 
I mean, I do just kind of want to see Moriko, so it's a pain in the ass. I need to do, like, a hotkey for that. There we go. That one was pretty fast. All things considered, that one was pretty fast. Oh, I've already taken a bath, huh? I guess that's the, the 5 EXP for you. Crimson Cape, Ward, Flood, Botany, Coma. I kind of hate it. You do kind of indeed hate it here. So, I guess we can just try it, right? Like, see if we can get an army knife for fun. Yeah, I'm thinking Kino. It says five damage. Well, we're terribly sorry. We've lost Emmerdale through some technical fault. We're trying to find the fault, and we will correct it as soon as we can and go back to Emmerdale as soon as we can. Until then, we'll play a little. Ah, I'm pleased to say we can rejoin Emmerdale. Okay, we had to do a little bit of a little bit of an Emmerdale, a little bit of a cut, and uh, we're right at the beginning of the run, so shit sucks, you know? But uh, we should be fine. We should be we should be fine-ish. I'm thinking like, how do we get money for the how do we get money for the smogs when we spent it all on the goddamn army knife? That's pretty bad. <laughs> Uh, well, this is definitely a way. It is certainly one of the ways of all time. And honestly, you're gonna hate me for this one. I'm hitting you with this. And then we're going to the vending machine. And then there are four funds. Because the game hates you. And then you're not gonna use them immediately because smoking kills. Uh, smoking? Smoking kills. And what you wanna do is you want to make your perception check to get minus two doom like we totally just did there not uh, not plus two that would never happen but uh you're gonna want to get some minus sanity if you can a little bit of minus sanity right there that's that's a perfect example of losing sanity looking for the emmerdale and not finding it because it happened earlier oh the forest is doomed well that's uh that's a skill issue on my part uh, we have charisma, we can do that. And by that I mean we can just fucking die. We can perish even. We can just just perish, just simply evaporate into mist. And uh, what I was going to say is, um, I don't know, there was something else I was going to rant about uh, yesterday, but instead we went on the Fortnite trios thing, which is the, I, I hate, I, I, I hate epic games, but then they also come out with like a blue demon skin for free, and it's like, okay, well... You know. Okay, hold on. We can't make a single charisma check because it's doomed and I'm dumb as hell. What? And we're not even wearing the stalker's mask? Can't change equipment right now. Okay, so theoretically speaking, theoretically speaking, let me cook, let me cook. Okay, by that I mean we're just done. It's so Jover. Dislocated shoulder. Okay. Go, go, gadget. I mean, listen, is this a stupid idea? Yes, because we didn't even need to do that. We could have gotten away with a weaker attack. Um, but, you know, feeling pretty good. Shiro-san's second enemy, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't second enemy. It was second mystery and then all the stat checks. So... You know, picking a perception weapon was the stupidest thing we could have done, because <laughs> perception doesn't have a lighthouse check, so who cares? But, uh, what was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? Um, yeah, Fortnite removing trios sucks, but I saw something the other day that I don't- It might have been what I was gonna rant about, but it might not have been, I actually don't remember. But I saw the- and it's getting more traction today, I've seen a couple of YouTubers talk about it. But, for the, it's a Final Fantasy thing, of course it is. But for those of you who don't know, uh, healers in Final Fantasy XIV, my job, my role, are uh, kind of messed up. Like, they're, they're kind of like not very good. They're not, they're not in a very good place, if that makes sense. Uh, being a healer kind of sucks. Which, yeah, being a healer kind of sucks. Like, bottom text. It, it's just, it's true though, right? Like, it's just 100% true. Um, we'll go to the village, just to make that a little bit more bearable. But yeah, no, be, being a healer kind of sucks. Uh, it basically, you don't really have to do any involved healing at all, because Medica 2, or your equivalent, will take care of you most of the time. 
Um, two healers for the normal content in the game is just like completely like two two healers for most content or one healer for light parties is complete overkill, right? Like if you're in a full party and you have two healers, one of the healers is just never going to have to do anything besides press damage buttons because if you have like if your other healer casts one AoE heal, then everybody's going to be safe. Um but yeah, no, it's like, be being a healer is not very good. Uh, dungeons aren't really good for healers because either you're just going to be spamming a single button the whole time or you're going to be spamming a single button the whole time, but your tank has a regen effect on them. Uh, depending on the level, you're either going to be cure botting or you're going to be doing exclusively only off GCD uh, heals or you're going to just be pressing damage because it's high level and your tank is basically invulnerable. Uh, unless it's one of those dungeons that got like a weird stat squish with the, with the, what is it, like the stat cap or whatever, so it sinks you down when you do it. Like, uh, I actually don't remember what it's called, but like the, the final 6.0 story MSQ dungeon, like that one got a really weird stat squished where the the tanks are just insanely squishy for no reason. So you actually have to like pay attention on like some dungeons, but not most. Like 90% of the time if you're playing healer, you cast Medica 2 uh, or put a regen on the tank or whatever and you win, right? Like that that's it. Like that's not really, a, and that's if the tank needs healing at all. There's a lot, especially during boss fights, the tanks are basically entirely self-sufficient. Um, is pretty bad. Horn muscle, huh? That's pretty bad. But, uh, yeah, no, it, it's, it's not great. I'll be real with you, it's, it's not very nice, and I'm not a big fan of it. But I do play healer because I like being the healer, you know? But most of the time, the the only time where you're allowed to basically have fun as a healer, essentially, and I just bumped the microphone, so I apologize for that. But the, the only time you're allowed to have fun as a healer is essentially did your team fuck up and then you get to be the, in case of emergency, break glass, pull the handle, deploy the healer. Um, but if your team is playing properly, being a healer is just boring as hell. Like, because you have nothing to do. And there, like, people have been complaining about healer for a really long time. And one of the, the things that Yoshi P, the director, the director and producer, the, the god of the game, essentially, um, you know, the, the god of the MMO, Everybody likes Yoshi P. One of the things that you had said is that if you want healer to be like challenging and engaging, go play ultimates. Now ultimates are, you know, they're the hardest fights in the game. They're fucking crazy. Um, you know, ult ultimates are super difficult. And so if you want people to go play ultimates, which I mean, here's the thing. Ultimates are fun. Like I, we've been doing Uwu. And I'll be honest with you, Uwu is some of the most fun I've had with the game, just period. But uh, yeah, we're gonna take minus three stamina, just as like a little treat, you know? We did six damage because she takes bonus, that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, no, like, it, Uwu is some of the most fun I've ever had with the game, like playing it. But uh, the thing is, the only, it, it, the fun of it is getting to a mechanic, like, getting to a new phase, and then that phase hits like a fucking truck because nobody knows when or how to mitigate yet, so it's this really hectic, like, you know, having to heal people while also doing mechanics, and if you're not healing people while you're doing the mechanics, everybody's gonna die, um, and so it is, like, it, it's really fun because it's, it's a very hectic experience, and you're still doing difficult mechanics, but then you're also having to keep your team alive. And then there's, like, legitimate... Like, there, there are instances in Savage where I have let people drop, and the reason why I've let them drop is because of jank AoE healing, which is a 
genuine problem, and which I, I can talk about that in a second, but like jank AoE healing, or I'm just so bored out of my mind, I'm just pressing glare and I don't give a shit. Because it's like the like literally in Savage, if there's like a, a bunch of damage coming out, you just medica to cure three. And then if that didn't get the job done, throw another cure three out there or tell your co-healer to wake up. Um, because, like, most of the time, like, there's a, like, massive amounts of damage coming out of Savage, Medica 2 will overheal on its own. So, you know, just, like, but if it's, like, really big damage, like, during, like, natural alignment in, um, in P8S, you know, you're, you got a Medica 2, you got a Cure 3, and you got, I saved the Lily Bell for that part as well, so, um, the Liturgy. Uh, and that's pretty fun. I like that part, because you have to do a lot of healing there. But, uh, and you actually have to think about it, too. Like, you have to actually save your healing resources and think about what you're doing, because there are other parts of the fight that you might need those cooldowns up for. Um, but e even then, it's just sort of like a mindless spamming fest. You don't really have to think about it. Like, even with Min Piety, as long as your group is mitigating perfectly fine and you're only healing during those windows, you'll have more than enough mana to do everything. Uh, even with the changes to Thin Air that make Thin Air bad... But, um, art knowledge moment? Hell yeah, brother. But, uh, anyway, so ultimates are the hardest fights in the game. And Uwu, the easiest ultimate, has been some of the most fun that I've ever had uh, playing the game. But, there's the hardest of the ultimates and the hardest fight in the game, which is uh, Top, the Omega Protocol. Uh, and it is literally the hardest fight in the game. Like, it killed... Like, there were hardcore raiding groups who died because top was too hard, right? Like, top is just unbelievably difficult. We, we really did roll a nine. Very funny on our perception check. Like, top is just insanely too difficult. Like, it is borderline... Like, not, it, it's a terribly designed fight, from what I've heard. I've, I've never tried it. Um, but, you know, it's just a brutally difficult fight. It is absolutely unforgiving. It is, it, like, it's the hardest fight in the game, bar none. There is not a harder challenge in Final Fantasy XIV than the Omega Protocol. And, like, listen, I can tell you, I have, like, this is my first, you know, savage uh, raids that I've been doing uh, in Pandemonium. But, like, I've done, I, I've done Asphodelos, I've done Abyssos. I can't tell what's going on, like, half the time. Like, I, and I'm doing Uwu, too, which is also an ultimate, which is easy. And anybody with a, who's willing to dedicate a couple months to the fight can clear Uwu. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I know, I know, I know. But Uwu is still hard. Uwu is still really hard. 90% of the people who play the game are never going to uh, attempt to do uwu, uwu. They're never going to get close to clearing Uwu uh, if they did try. U uwu is still hard. Um, but, like, I I've done Uwu. Well, I'm doing Uwu. We're not... We're on Titan right now. But we're doing Uwu. I've done Asphodelos. I've done Abyssos. I can't tell what's going on like 90% of the time when I watch people clear uh, the Omega Protocol, right? Like, I literally just don't understand what's happening on the screen. Like, I just don't get it. Uh, it just, it does not make sense in my brain. And I've had the mechanics explained to me. They still don't really make sense. I've looked at diagrams and read a little bit into the fight, and it's like, I maybe could get this if I practiced, like, a lot, but it just seems, like, completely just unhinged and crazy, you know what I mean? So, the idea that, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it literally is the hardest fight in the game. And the people who have cleared it <laughs> usually say it's bad. Uh, because it's just not a, like, like I, I was talking about this the other day. You can design something that is hard and fun, and then you can design something that is hard and not fun. And recently, the, unfortunately, the Square Enix team has been making things that are hard and not fun. That's really unfortunate, by the way. I actually think we use the Dust of Seeing here, but I mean, you need to block again because you doubled down on this, right? Like, because you blocked, you need to do that. 
Like, that's not even something that... Like, you just gotta go for it, man. And then you just die. Because you're, you're unlucky. And sometimes that happens. You're just gonna keel over and die. I'll, I'll probably give you another one, that's fine. But, uh... Maybe I should have actually accepted that so we could get rid of the Thorn Muscle. I, I don't think we ever can get rid of the Thorn Muscle because it's like... It just doesn't really work, you know? We have Perception, we can do it. No, never mind. Just, I always, like... Ever since we got 8 Perception, every Perception check, we rolled a 9. But that's okay. We needed the Mulligan anyways so that we're not playing as Haru again for the second time in a row. Um, although I guess we did play Haru second time in the row. So, you know, I guess it is what it is. But, uh... We'll do we'll do item randomization on as well. Just uh fuck it we go though, let's go. Mimi moment. What's the scalpel like? Um honestly, like what changed? <laughs> do your starting weapons change? I actually the I don't think the old shotgun changed, so I'm pretty sure. I thought that the scalpel might be a little bit different. No, nothing changed. It's literally the same thing. Uh, I mean, which makes it as reliable as we're used to, but I probably want to not use it. I would much rather get, like, something fun from the occult shop. But, uh, so I, I've been talking about top and how it's really difficult, but I haven't really wrapped it back around yet, okay? Have I? So, I, I set this up earlier. Healer is bad. Healer feels bad to play, and, like, healers just don't really... Like, they do the least amount of damage in the raid group, and they're only there because raid wides exist. And sometimes bosses spam raid wides. And, uh, well, also healers exist as, like, an oh shit button as, like, the party fucked up colossally. But in order for the party to fuck up so badly that, like, healers would be needed, like, you you'd have to be doing some, like, alliance raid with a lot of insta-kill mechanics in order for healers to feel like they're actually really doing something. Like, healer is the most fun to play when you're playing with people who are not very good at the game and are, like, colossally fucking up. That is the best time to play healer, because you're actually, like, sweating. You're like, oh shit, people are dying. People aren't mitigating, people aren't healing themselves with their own, like, healing cooldowns. People aren't playing the game properly, they're standing in AoEs. Like, that's the most fun I've ever had being a healer, is playing with people who are bad at the game. Because... It's just the only time that you ever get to do anything that isn't Medica 2, regen, and then just glare and holy spam, right? And even then, it's like sometimes you don't even need to use the Medica 2. Sometimes just a single regen on the tank is good enough for the entire fucking pull, because the tanks are invulnerable. And during Savage, it's just like glare, 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 malefic, 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 broil, 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 broil. Oh shit, there's a raid wide? Uh, Medica 2. Is it Aspected Benefic? I don't remember what the Astrologian one's called off the top of my head. But it's like, Astrologian is only, like, kind of fun because you have, like, the cards to micromanage so that, like, once you get super used to a fight... We're going with the with the Nurse Drip. Uh, once you get super used to the fight, it's just, like, you, you can then just focus on, like, optimizing cards and shit and, like, optimizing your Earthly Star uptime or whatever. Um... There we go, finally saw a little Moriko. As a treat on the TV. But uh, apparently YouTube can't see Moriko on the TV. Uh, despite my, uh, despite trying. The, um... But yeah, no, it's like, so healers are kind of in a bad spot. Like, y you don't really... If you, if you have a warrior in your group, or fuck, even a paladin, or a gunbreaker, like pretty much everything but a Dark Knight, like, you aren't needed. Like, a Paladin has Clemency, Warrior has, uh, everything, and the Gunbreaker has Aurora and Heart of Corundurum? C Conundurum? I don't remember what it's called. But the, uh, the shield and the heal after the shield expires. Uh, well, well, it's not a shield, it's a mitigation. But, Actually, it is a shield because it combos with your your two in your one two three combo because your two gives you a shield and then anybody who has the the heart of conundrum or corundum also gets that shield. So it is actually a shield as well, but it's like the most pathetic shield you've ever seen in your life. So I guess it's not that. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, basically, like the the tanks can 
healing is so, so little healing is required in the game that the long cooldown or high mana cost abilities that other tanks have that can heal or mitigate for the party are good enough that if the tanks are using them then you as a healer are completely invalidated right like if you have a paladin who's like casting clemency your healer doesn't need to do anything for the whole dungeon now should the paladin be casting clemency no but the fact is that if the paladin did cast clemency then the most optimal thing from you from a healer perspective is just to press dps button for the entire fucking time because that the paladin is has one button that completely invent well divine veil too but if the paladin is using divine veil and clemency properly and by properly i mean they're just using it they probably shouldn't be using it but you you get what i mean uh if the paladin is healing people then you're completely invalid like you don't like heal like the healer doesn't need to exist there um if the warrior exists you don't need to heal like if if the warrior knows what they're doing you literally don't need you could go afk and they could finish the dungeon the boss the trial the raid without you like if there's just a single warrior that exists and is the main tank the healer is completely irrelevant just entirely if they know what they're doing unless it's like a super like difficult psychotic full pull like wall to wall in like i don't know is it the dead ends and holminster's switch those are like the ones that i like look out for the most but there's probably a couple other ones usually the first dungeon in the expansion is very psychotic with its first pull damage i don't know why but like the first pull in holminster's switch is just like one of the harder pulls in the game and it just is right like i, I don't even get it like i i genuinely do not understand bro is baffled I mean, I was gonna buy a weapon, but I, I I won't say no to that, to be honest with you. And you know, we'll prepare as well. I like using the prepare items uh, if they're not disgustingly bad. Let me actually remember to grab the, the handcuffs as well. I don't I don't grab the handcuffs often enough, but um Yeah, no, it's just like being a healer kinda sucks. And also, that's not to count for, like, red mages and summoners exist. So if you have, like, one of the three tanks in the game... Because I'm pretty sure Dark Knight is, like, the only tank that can't, like, do, like, completely take the role of a healer if they needed to, right? Like, Gunbreaker managing Aurora and uh, the heart skills properly and not wasting them can definitely keep a team alive if the healer is dead uh warrior just existing can solo pretty much every dungeon boss in the game after a certain level if your level sink down then you do need the healer because you just don't have your skills at that level um and then like you know a paladin can literally just heal people as a gcd and has divine veil which is pretty cool too um but if you have like how do I put it? Oh boy. I, we're gonna do it like that, which is a little bit bad, but we're gonna do it like that. Um, and I think this is just still worth it. I, I think spamming the, the the school, the school, spamming the police station is still worth it. But, um, ooh, little magic, little spells. We do a little little trolling. I'm gonna trade it in though. I don't need. Uh, I just wanted to roll it once, and we got something that is probably horrendous, but maybe we can we can make it work. But yeah. So being a healer is bad, and uh, whenever healers complain about how being a healer sucks, the 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 god of Final Fantasy basically tells you to go do the hardest content in the game. Because the hardest content in the game is the only place you're ever going to be allowed to, um, like, actually play a healer. And, I mean, listen, figuring out how to heal friction, like, getting the timing down and the coordination with the team in, like, throwing out the, the cure 3s and having, like, your, your bubbles up and both the healers working together... Uh, it, it was actually really fun because it's like one of the first time like the first time that I ever had to actually care about healing was in P8S with natural alignments and the ifrits in high concept 2 
Everything else is just like stupid brain dead easy. Anyone could do it on their first try. Like you just press one button, Medica two, and then do the mechanic how you would normally do it, right? Like don't e you don't even have to like fucking worry about it. But um for Uwu and uh P8S phase two, I actually had to like figure out what I was doing with my co-healer, and we actually had to, like, pay attention to what was happening in the game, which never... It, it, it's literally the hardest content in the game is the only time you ever have to pay attention to healing people. Everything else, literally just, like, Medica 2, Teehee, <laughs> easy, or, you know, Aspected, Benefic, whatever. Um, I, I would say that Astrologian is definitely more engaging, though, just because you have more stuff to do. But the thing is, and one of the reasons that's keeping me from playing Astro, is because there's things about Astrologian's kit that I find annoying, and I also know that the only thing that Astrologian is going to do for me is, like, extend that, um, being bored out of my mind point for probably, like, a week. Like, when I get comfortable with a fight to where I can, like, do my Astrologian stuff properly and with proper uptime, then... I will just be bored out of my mind and it's going to have the same problem as before but with astrologian there's more moving parts so it would make me like it, it would make me take longer to prog essentially and so i just don't view it as worth it because astrologian will also be incredibly boring and make me want to bash my brains out uh during savage prog but uh it just has like more moving parts that i feel like i'm just fucking up and doing way worse right like if I fuck up, like, oh, no, my Dio was gone for, like, four seconds, who cares? But if my cards were gone for, like, if I drifted my cards by, like, ten seconds and put Earthly Star down, like, three seconds too late, you know, th that feels terrible. With White Mage, it's just, like, who gives a shit, right? Just glare Lamau. But, uh, you know, he healer is... I love the fantasy of being a healer, if you can believe it. And I like the healer outfits, and I like being the healer. But just being a healer in Final Fantasy XIV kind of sucks because you're just a DPS but with no rotation. <laughs> I don't know. Give give White Mage like a one two three or something. I don't know. Make White Mage in a play like dancer or something. Do something with White Mage. White Mage just sucks. But uh, you know, I love like I love White Mage though. Like White Mage is horrible, but I love White Mage if that makes sense. Like I I wouldn't want to main any other job, but like they could do like so much better with White Mage. Um, but with that being said, you know it's like, um, how do I even put it? So I I've just been ranting about how much healer sucks and then how ultimates are fun. Well, here's the thing. And I made a Twitter post about this. You you might have seen it, and you might have been like, what the fuck is the context for that? But uh, the hardest fight in the game, the Omega Protocol, something so difficult that, like, hardcore... Like, people who were hardcore at the game stopped playing the game because they looked at that fight and they're like, wow, that fight is so bad and so difficult, I don't want to do this game anymore. Like, there are people... Like, there are hardcore raiders who are done with this game because of how bad Top was. Um, and even there was a, like, a big case of, uh, one of the bigger Final Fantasy XIV content creators, Zeppla. She progged DSR, uh, the, the previous Ultimate, and it was, like, the most fun she's ever had with the game. So she wanted to prog Top when it came out, and Top was just pure detritus that she basically, like, is playing other games, uh, and not really focusing. Like, she's leaning away from Final Fantasy XIV because of how fucking awful, uh, Top was, um... But, you know, top is still the hardest content in the game, so if you clear it, you must be a really good healer, right? Uh, well, here's the thing. The healing checks in top basically don't exist. Like, there is, like... And the reason why I can say this is that, um... A, like, I think it was, like, a day ago? A couple days ago? It was whenever I did the tweet. It, at least that's when I saw the video, right? I don't know the date that they cleared. But uh, it is possible to beat the hardest content, Final Fantasy XIV, without healers. So a team of three tanks and five DPS beating the hardest fight in the game. And listen, you know, you don't want to minimize people's achievements because that's actually, like, cool as fuck. You know, like, that is... Like, being able to clear an ultimate under like some cheese condition 
where you're like abusing the mechanics of the game because how how it's possible is there's a phase where you'll basically all be killed you'll you'll basically be wiped uh if you don't have a healer but because of how resurrection works in the game you can have it to where somebody is respawning they have iframes that person has a raise everybody dies and then they raise everybody back up and during that final part of the fight the boss doesn't do auto attacks so having a caster uh, dps slow raising people while they're the only person alive is completely okay because the boss is never going to do an auto attack to them the boss is just doing like the like the enrage or whatever right um so it's like just like i watched the whole thing and it's impressive it's really impressive and the amount of people who are going to be able to do this is that team and maybe like one one other group right like this is the hardest fight in the game there's no way people are ever gonna it's goizo time oh it's goizo time i, I liked it when she goizoed all over the place <laughs> but uh you know they're like it, nobody oh we haven't seen this guy in forever dude look at that pitch looking lovely today lads looks grand um like the amount of people who are going to be able to to do this uh don't really exist right i want to make that clear like they've done it it's going to be their achievement there might be one other group that grinds it out and you do need like lucky critical like there's legitimate critical hit variants for that uh that is like important because they're they all have res sickness or whatever right um so you know if you think about it is it something that people are going to be able to like reproduce and do is it going to be a common strategy no absolutely not like most groups like 99 percent of people who clear top are gonna want to have healers but the problem is and here's the thing i am uh you know I i'm one of those guys who i like it if you can do goofy stuff in video games you know what i mean like if you can make something silly happen if you can cheese something in a game i'm not gonna be like a hater you know i'm gonna be like a, oh that's cool that's very impressive and i do think it is very cool and very impressive but i just think it's kind of sad that like the game exists in the way that it does because it really is it, it really just highlights how useless healers are because the hardest fight in the game doesn't need you because two paladins and a summoner casting physic can out heal an ultimate fight it's like that's that's embarrassing right like the the it's completely embarrassing like the idea that that's remotely acceptable because here's the thing i like the fact that they did it and that's cool like i i'm never gonna be mad at the team i'm just in incredibly impressed they're amazing at the game but the fact that it was possible and that the only the only hurdle for them was figuring out how to get around like the if you don't have a healer everyone will die mechanic and then they figured out how to get around it and then they cleared the fight you know um like and i i and admittedly i'm kind of talking from a point of ignorance here because i've just been kind of absorbing what other people are saying about it and apparently there is a mechanic in top where you need a healer to like use healer lb3 or something i don't know but there was like something that you needed a healer for and since they don't have a healer they had to use like uh invuln resurrection cheese uh to to make it all work and it barely works because they still all have some a res sickness and they are racing against the enrage you know but um yeah no it's just uh it, it's just sad you know because like listen again nobody's gonna replicate that ever right like n nobody like maybe one team will be like all right we're gonna do top without uh without healers but no team realistically is gonna be like top no healers is like a dominant meta strat or anything really like it's just not happening you know nobody is gonna like li literally nobody like nobody is gonna look at that and be like okay top can be cleared without healers let's clear it without healers no your tanks need to be on point uh, apparently there was some like monk mantra shenanigans that made it possible you know it was a deliberate like 
very, very difficult thing that they had to do. And yeah, watching the clear video makes it look easy, but that's just how watching Final Fantasy content is in the first place. You see somebody do something and you're like, why is that impressive? Looks easy to me. And you just don't know how incredibly difficult it is to actually pull off. Um, but uh, with that being said, it's like just being able to do it. Like again, the the team is is really good. Like I don't wanna I don't wanna take it away from the team, but it's just sad, you know. Like seeing your role being optional, even if it requires cheese, even if it requires like not exploiting game mechanics, but abusing game mechanics in your favor. And it requires paladins to spam clemency <laughs> and a summoner physic and uh, making sure that monk mantra is on point. Um, even though it requires all that stuff, it's still like... Like, you, you couldn't do an ultimate without tanks. Like, literally impossible. Tanks have to be so durable as they can survive like fucking anything, you know? Like, tanks are as durable as they are for a reason with how damage works in this game. So, you need a tank, and you'd need DPS to beat the Enrage. Healers are the only optional role, and they're optional a lot of the time. You know, I think the, the first moment I ever had in FF14 where I'm like, okay, being a healer might, like, be horrible is during yeah fuck it let's do it is during the i don't remember what it is it's the containment bay like p17 something or other it's the second one it's the one with the uh with the last the 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 scales of judgment lady and um the thing about her is that she has an attack at the very beginning of the fight that is designed to wipe parties who have never done it before. And it's just this haha -ha, little silly thing, and once you get hit by it once, you're never gonna get hit by it again. Um, the problem is that uh, it was... Oh, the boy! He's here to cheer me up. He, he, heard, me, uh, he heard me complaining, and he's here. But uh, essentially... It's sort of like a... How do I put it? She, You're on a scale, and then she tips the scale, and then you fall off, right? And then after you get hit by it, you're just gonna learn to follow the team. Like, it's one of those things where you see seven out of eight people run to a very specific spot as some crazy special effect is happening, and you're like, oh, I wonder why they ran over there, and then you immediately die. It happens literally all the time in pretty much every Final Fantasy fight in the game. So, I don't really think... It takes bonus, huh? Okay, okay. We, we like to see a little bonus. I can also just do this, so that, that works too. But, um... It, like, it's just one of those silly things. It doesn't really matter. Ooh, bow bow. you love to see it. We'll still do it right anyways, though. Be careful with the lines. Um... I draw the lines incorrectly. Oh, you hate to see that. I think we just die. I think we just die. Shouldn't have used the anatomy book at the very beginning. Oh, you've got to be kidding me, man. But uh, we do a little bowing and bowing. But yeah, so basically what happened is uh, me and the healer, like, I don't know if the other healer was new, but me and the healer, we died to that attack, right? And it's a bow. And it's a bow. And it's a clap? It's a clap. Okay, so two bows, three claps. Very easy to remember. Um, but me and the healer, we died to literally the first one of those. The boss is at like 80% health, and we're both dead. And there's no like DPS raise on our team, right? So your healers are dead. Both of your healers are dead. And so what my friend did, uh, who they were playing tank, and than everybody else in the party instead of wiping and then like letting us join them in the actual instance we were held hostage there and we just watched like me and the healer we just watched dead the whole fight we watched the entire thing as the rest of the team did it flawlessly with basically no healing required and it was one of the most like 
I, I hated that so much. It was one of the worst experiences I've had in the game. And it was the first point where I'm like, okay, yeah, healing might actually just be, like, the worst job in the game. But I still liked it. You know, I still had fun doing it. And it's just a shame that it's bad. <laughs> it's a shame that it's uh, that healing sucks and healing is bad. Because healing is fun, you know? Um, but yeah, no, it's just, it's just a shame, right? Like, it's just, uh... There, there's so many cool things that you could do with healing. But they just don't do any of them. <laughs> they just don't do any of them. The, the, we actually had the school, like, marked by the police, and we still almost died. But, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was pure detritus, I'll be real with you. Like, the, uh, the amount of, uh... And here's the thing, that experience of, like, the healers dying to one of those mechanics, and then not getting a raise, and not being able to come back, and then you just watch your entire party solo it without you, that's normal, right? Like, that's that's completely normal. Um, because it can happen pretty much anywhere, at any time, for any reason. Like, if the healer makes a mistake and dies, then the rest of the group can just finish the entire thing without them, and there's nothing that the healer can do about that. Like, th there's, no there's not a mechanic that's like, okay... Uh, everybody's gonna die if you don't have a healer. And obviously, like, having a healer check would be annoying. And the way- it, it's the reason it is, so that if your healer is bad, you don't actually lose the game, right? Like, if they made it to where you needed a healer- and, and this is the thing, because I've been in a party finder, or in a- in a- in a roulette, with someone who is a healer, and they were not very good, okay? They were bad. And we wiped into a pull, and they were like, okay, I'm gonna leave, right? Like, I'm gonna leave, I'm sorry, you guys need a better healer. And, of course, we were like, no, 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 it's okay, we'll get through the instance together. And we just did slow pulls, and everything was fine. But the thing is, like, what that healer didn't understand when they were like, I'm so sorry, y'all deserve a better healer, I'm gonna leave and take the, the matchmaking penalty for you. The, the reason what they didn't understand is that if you, like... The healer isn't necessary at all. Like, if the tank and the DPS wanted to clear that dungeon without you, they they could very easily. Just, you know, pulling small mob packs at a time. And, the, and then they can just win, right? So the, the game is designed very specifically to the point where healers... 3% doom in this economy, what the hell? The, the game is explicitly designed... To where if your healer is bad, it doesn't matter. Because you can just pull slowly and then just win, right? It's not a big deal. And so... That is one of the things that's always so sad about it. Is that a healer thinking, oh, I'm doing poorly, I gotta apologize to the group. It's like, nah, nah, nah. If you're new to healer and you're having trouble doing big pulls and the tank keeps doing big pulls and wiping the group, that's the tank's fault, right? Like, as a tank, you always do that first pull to gauge the healer, and then you adjust to what the healer can do. And that's if you're not playing warrior. If you're playing warrior, who gives a shit? Just pull wall to wall, doesn't matter. <laughs> You'll live anyways. <laughs> but if you're any other tank, you know, you gauge what the healer can do, and then you adjust your pulls based on it. But if the healer is just, like, bad or not playing properly or, god forbid, still using Cure 1, um, fishing for fucking free cures for Cure 2, um, god help them if they are. If you're doing that past Stormblood, god help you. I, I saw somebody at Bardem's Metal doing that the other day. I, I nearly had a stroke. But again, it didn't matter because the game's easy, so it's like you can just play, like, the worst possible way you can. And even Bardem has, like, a psychotic first pull, but it was still fine. Um, but anyways, getting a little off topic here. Like, the healer can be bad, and that doesn't affect the game in any way, right? Like, you, you can be pure detritus, and you're still going to clear all the content uh, on normal and for the, you know. Uh, let's actually go and get the... Because it's less Doom... It's less doom. I don't know if I want to actually treat this. We will. Just because. I'm getting a little nervous here. But we should be fine. Go ahead and discard these two things. I'm never using them again. 
This is timeline A. We're we're gonna try to fish at the monument at some point. Um, we can't. We we just have to do nothing. We can't afford any of the penalties there. Minus reason plus doom. That ain't happening. Um. It's the tapeworm salary man back at it again. I mean, what is this gonna do? That's 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 actually gonna do 24 though, right? You're not trolling me here. What if we just miss? That'd be kind of funny. I don't want to miss. So, but in case we do, yeah, that, that's about my luck, isn't it? Yeah, I'm glad I did that. 92%. By the way, uh, now how how can we win this? Here's how Web can still win, uh, and it's a blank page. It doesn't have anything written on it because it's very unlikely. <laughs> we only have to go here once, right? 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 Oh, you fucker! Okay, we do it anyways. That's so that's so bad. That's so bad. That is so bad. We should have done that first. Now, honestly, if a location's doomed, you just switch it over. Like, you got to at this point. Desperation. Well, that's funny. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't actually have... I mean, we could throw the scalpel. Do we have Takashi, though? If we have Takashi, though, it's Jover. So we got to do a little block, and then... You do it next turn? Yeah, 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 yeah. You do a little block. That said brace, right? Okay, it said brace. We're good. Desperation. That. You're done. Get out of Hell's Kitchen. Take off your jacket. Okay, branded is pretty bad, but... As long as it's not two funds, we can do it. Actually, if it is two funds, we can do it anyways, but... I would love to see Sanity right now. Okay. 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 We're, we're sitting here, we're not liking what it's looking like at all, but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, sometimes you, you hit the gritty and sometimes you don't. It's gonna be, I, I think we're gonna lose. We're definitely gonna lose, it's over. Um, we needed to make that dexterity check because it's very unlikely. Unless we just have, like, no stat checks and we can just somehow heal before then, but, like, you know, it's not happening. <laughs> Um, minus three, we're good. I don't remember this, by the way, but minus three, minus three, minus three, and then, do we have Heart of Darkness? We do, so it's minus three, minus six. How are we getting out of this one? Uh, there is actually no Takashi fight, so you know what that means. <laughs> you know what that means. There's no free healing to be had here. Um... So you just got to do it big and, like, fucking die. Although, hold on. There is a little bit of hopium. But we have to remember the second enemy, which I don't. So we'll see. There is, like, a tiny microscopic amount of hopium. But I think branded most likely solos. I think branded solos, unfortunately. Because we're going to go up to 92%. Well, actually, hold on. No, no, it has to be 92%. So we do that, and then we have to, what do we have to do? What's our win condition here? Oh my god, I remembered that. That's crazy. So that was our win condition right there. Uh, we're still going to do out. We're still going to do out because branded one branded proc gets us. But uh, we at least... I, I think uh, having Heart of Darkness... Yeah, that sealed it. No branded? No branded? No branded? Oh, what? <laughs> oh, no, you can't do this to me, man. I don't remember what we did first. Oh, God. Uh, no, we lose. It's Jover? Um... I wish I had, like, a rule of doing, like, Botanier footage first. I feel like we did footage first. There's no way. There's no way, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. 
hated that game. I was like, I literally was not paying attention at all. I was just ranting about healers the whole goddamn time. Um, but yeah, no, like, that was a Mimi run of all time. And I think this is probably the least I've talked about the game while playing. That's fucking crazy. Stay safe out there. Have a good one. Bye. We must apologize for the technical fault that caused the temporary loss of Emmerdale in the latter half of the program. We hope it didn't spoil your enjoyment of it too much.